Now, as we know, Old Mate relies on ESXi here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for all my virtual machines. Our system setup and product review videos here are done on my Acer AT350F2 with ESXi 6.7. But as we've noticed, my Acer is struggling. So I've decided to put another feather in the bow. The Proxmox experiment failed, but after a recommendation from a friend of mine to give Citrix Zen Server another try, I've decided that might be the best option. Welcome to a new series here at Old Mates Backyard Tech. This one, we're doing the Citrix Zen Server project. This is part one, getting all the hardware sorted out. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Zen Server Project Part 1, getting all the hardware sorted out. The goal for today, as I said, is to get all the hardware done. I mentioned in the coffee chat video uploaded earlier that the RAM I had out in the garage just was a no-go, it was a disaster. So I have RAM here in the office I want to get sorted out and see if we can get it going. And then if we have time today before I've got to do the domestics with the other half, we might get part two out and that's actually getting Zen Server installed. The idea behind this is to put another fe feather in the boa here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech regarding my hypervisor system. As I've said, my poor Acer AT350F2 is on its last legs and I need that server to hang on as long as possible until I can get another server from my mate at his computer business, which is somewhere between the F, the AT350 and my Dell R730. Anyway, so I've got the video camera ready. I've got the SD card in the camera. That's a good thing. We'll get the, the uh, NEC plasma panel uh, hooked up, get some power and start going through the RAM and find out what RAM I've got. The bare minimum I want to put in it is six gig, but if I can get more than six gig in it, which would be really good, that'll make it even better. So, Without further ado, I've forgotten what I say. Oh yeah, let's get into it. All right, so I've got a keyboard, I've got the plasma screen turned on, and uh, this thing's noisy. I was actually quite surprised how noisy this was. So what I'm gonna do, um, I didn't show you it yesterday, so I'll show you it now before we start testing all the RAM. And uh, we'll go through the BIOS of this, and then we'll, uh, I guess, get started on the RAM. So, let me get the tripod set up, and uh, we'll get started. Alright, so, power up the server. As you can tell, it's noisy, guys. Which is why I think it'll end up out in the cabinet. It does take a bit to get started. Uh, F2 is what we want. Okay, so you can see I'm, everything's out of whack, but it is a Xeon CPU. Oh, that's interesting. I was a little bit disappointed when I saw that, but as you can see, 4 gig of RAM, 1.8 CPU, and uh, I mean, it's a AppDio utility anyway. If we go into processor configuration, uh, you can see there, um, I've obviously got to enable that, which I didn't do yesterday anyway, but I'll do it now. So, quad core, quad thread, which is fine. Memory configuration, we'll go in and have a look at that. You can see there, total memory, 4 gig. 
dual channel 800 meg speed um, so it's not you know it is ECC if we go into the SATA configurations you can see there it's set up as a RAID uh, using Intel matrix storage I may just leave it like that if this is just going to be used as a, a hypervisor for this I may just leave it in that um, it's not a mission critical one so I'm not worried there's our serial port which we don't need to worry about and our USB configuration again don't need to worry about much of that either and then our PCI you can see there the dual video monitor is disabled and uh, so we don't need to worry about that either server management and um, the only thing I've turned off is the watchdog um, I don't bother with that the boot options as you can see there and uh, I'm just going to leave it like this apparently this thing is UFI, is, uh, UFI compatible but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment um, it does have an EFI shell on it but that doesn't that doesn't surprise me if we're honest and uh, error code no error codes which is nice so what I'll now do is start going through RAM and once I find RAM which if I can if you can see it there it all is there alright so I'm going to start going through the RAM and once I find RAM that works uh, we'll come back alright well finally I have 6 gig of RAM in her that's all she's going to take so what I want to do now is have a look at the storage system this thing's running and uh, everything like that dates right times right uh, 1.8 6 gig he's lied to me again I thought this was 2.2 gig but it's actually only 1.86 that's a little bit of a worry uh, okay so I suppose what we better do is just check that CPU configuration and make sure virtualization is enabled it is not okay so I'm hoping this is uh, I'm hoping this is actually oh yeah it will be it will be it's okay I was I was just thinking about something all right let me get uh, let me get the hard drives plugged up we'll come back and then uh, We'll see what's next. All right, well, I've got the uh, hard drives plugged in. And uh, we'll just see what the RAID controller in this is set to. I have no idea personally. Um, although if I, considering I know who built this server, I'll guarantee you it is rated badly. So this is now running dual channel memory, which is good. 667 megahertz RAM speed at 6 gig. I'm not overly worried. I know people are going to be like, you're an idiot, old mate. You're not going to be able to do anything on that. I'm not worried. Trust me. I think to get into... Ooh, system has been halted. That's not good. Why have you been halted? We may have to do a bit more troubleshooting here guys. System has been halted. That's not good. I may have to be going around trying to find out what's going on with the hard drives here. It could be the hard drives that are pulling this thing down. Okay. This looks a bit better. What's this thing set up as? Oh! I don't even get to have a look at control I. 
so it was just in a RAID 1 mirror. Huh? Have a look at this, guys. The guy that built this, which was not me, I do know the person that built this, is an idiot. So he's put two different hard drives in it and set it at 300 gig. Um, all right, let's just delete that RAID volume. Okay, so we have two different sized hard drives in this thing. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, the know-it-all experts would make the assumption I built this server because they have absolutely no respect for my knowledge of hardware. But I'm not that dumb. Two different freaking hard drives in it. I mean, that makes me look somewhat like I have an IQ of four rather than an IQ of zero. Ask the know-it-all experts, guys, they'll claim I have an IQ of zero. But I'm not that dumb. That is... Oh. Okay. So, we need to do modifications here, guys. And it begins with, obviously, getting rid of the 300 gig drive. And I will go and find a 500 gig drive. So, the second drive is 500 gig. So, this, I mean... Really? I'm, people say I, I know nothing about IT. The know-it-all experts will tell all my viewers I know nothing. And yet, I can tell you now, that doesn't look right. Okay, let me go and find a 500 gig drive, I'll be back. Alright, so I've taken the other side of the case off. So, better move the camera down so you can actually see what I'm actually. There we go. So, we're going to take out this hard drive just here. Because some idiot. I mean, how stupid. Strange thing is, I actually know the person that built this server. I shouldn't be surprised, to be honest. I really shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Um, it's just unfortunately, like I said, I do know the person that built it, and uh, this is the uh, this is a person who, if he can't get the DNS working on an ADS, he just puts in Google. I'm not kidding you. Um, if he can't get a DNS system running properly, he just puts in Google. into the ADS's DNS server. So, let's get the drive out of here. A 320 gig drive and a 500 gig, I mean, dead set. We will put in a Samsung 500 gig and we will rate it as 500 gig only because I'm not worried about anything else. Jeez. You know. I get the problem I have, right? And I've said this before, guys. I don't give a stuff how my systems are set up, okay? I don't care how ugly my systems look, right? But if I'm, when I was building servers, you know, and this is going way back, like to the early 2000s and that, right? I'd make sure that all the hard drives are exactly the same. And if a hard drive has to be replaced for whatever reason, due to, you know, it failing for whatever reason, um, I wouldn't just go and, you know, I haven't got a 500 gig drive, I'll just go and put a 400 gig drive in it. Oops. Hang 
you know, I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'll send the photo to my mate at his computer business. Won't surprise him. What's the other screw? There it is. All right. Now the only reason I'm putting four hard drive screws back in this is because, as you can hear, this thing vibrates quite badly, and I want to avoid the vibrations. There for the moment. Okay. Now, just let me find where I've dropped those screws, and we'll be back. All right. So let's uh, reconnect all this up again. With the correct sized hard drives. Now, hang on a minute. Let's see. Really. I mean, I give up. I really give up sometimes, guys. I just talk about being sloppily put together. Alright, so let me get this all plugged up again and uh, we'll fire it up. And I am just going to raid these into raid one. Okay, I'm not, like, I know people are going to have a complete tiz fit with it, and, you know, how can you be doing raid one? Oh, old mate, you're an idiot. You know, you should be setting up X, Y, Z, A, B, C setup. CBF, all right? This is not going to be a mission-critical server. By any stretch of the imagination, it is not going to be a mission-critical server. I have... Two mission critical servers, well, I've got more than two mission critical I have enough mission critical servers that I don't need one. I don't need another one. This is just for SSPR videos and stuff like that. Alright, let me get everything plugged back up, fire it back up and we'll configure her up. Alright, we'll plug back up, bring this thing up and let's get it, let's get the hardware configured up. No power to the keyboard yet. It's only slightly faster than the Acer, and which is intriguing, because the other S series motherboard I had was actually a lot quicker to boot, which is rather surprising actually. So, I'm going to turn that on. Get into the Diag screen. really show you a lot of information this which is a little bit of a worry but anyway not worried so what we'll do the other thing I will actually experiment with guys is to make sure Citrix actually will ins install uh, at least in the raid scenario uh, hardware sorted out and in theory this is how it will run okay we have 465 gig for system ISO and the VM obviously and then I suppose what we will check in part two if I can if I get the time to do part two before I need to go and do domestics um, we will get uh, We'll see if Citrix will install. Now, that USB card that's in this thing, just let me grab the camera off the tripod, and I'll just quickly show you. Uh, there it is there, if I can find it, there we are. So I don't know if I'll leave this in. I may, I may end up taking this out. Um, it is a PCI, because as you can see, this thing has PCIe, PCI, um, Oh, sorry, PCIe, PCIe, and then two PCI slots, all right, because it is a server board, so you need backwards compatibility to um, 
legacy stuff as we all know. So what I'll do um, is uh, I'll get this video uploaded and then as long as I don't need to start the domestics yet, um, we'll come back and we'll just we'll just run a quick test to see whether or not Citrix. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's just check that this actually does work. All right. PS2 keyboard detected. Now it should hold. Ah. That's not what I want. Damn it. It's not going to boot because I don't want the boot agent. I've got to turn the boot agent off. Off, obviously. Let's just hold control delete out of that for a moment. Hardware problem. I've got to say, I do love this sort of hardware stuff, you know, trying to find RAM, figuring out hard drive stuff ups. You know, this is the sort of stuff I love doing. Um, and it's the stuff I used to do when I was working. You know, these days, people like me are redundant. It's all about, you know, fixing problems with Linux or Unix or something like that. Go into the Diag screen. I don't think this server's going to sit inside, guys. This will end up out at the. Uh, <laughs> this will end up out in the. Uh, what's his name? And we're good to go. All right. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. So there we go. All righty. Well, there's the hardware sorted out. Six gig of RAM, rated up hard drive. Um, yeah. This should be ready to go. With Citrix, you do need to set up two separate e Ethernet connections. At the moment, I will sort that out later once we come to actually getting this thing in run mode, at least from a getting it on my network. But what, I, what I'll do now is I'll put this video together and then uh, I'll see if the other half needs a hand with the domestics. If not, we'll see whether or not Citrix will actually install onto this server. It should because of its flexibility in comparison to that of other hypervisors but we'll we'll see so there's part one of the citrix zen server project stick around have a good one this has been an old mate's backyard tech presentation